I've got to admit, sequences and patterns are probably my favourite areas of mathematics. So this video is going to be quite fun for me to do. Sequences. What would a sequence be? A sequence would be, for example, 5, 7, 9, 11 and 13. It's a sequence because there is some pattern we can find about how to get from one of the numbers in the sequence to the next number in the sequence. Can you spot the pattern for this sequence? This, in this sequence, the numbers are going up by 2. So it's plus 2 each time. Plus 2 there, and plus 2 here, and plus 2 for all the other different gaps as well. That's the pattern for this sequence. What would the next two numbers in the sequence be? We've got the first number, the first term, the second term, the third, fourth, and fifth term. What would the sixth and seventh term? The sixth term would be 15, if you add 2 on. Let's change that to red. And the seventh term would be 17. Now let's get even more interesting. Say I wanted the hundredth term. Now, there's two different ways of doing this. One of them's wrong, and one of them's long. One way of doing it, which is wrong, is some people say, well, get the first term and times it by 100. That doesn't work. That will never work to get you the 100th term. The long way would be to go, well, that's the 7th, so let's do the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, until we get to 100. And that's long. But I'm going to try and show you a way that's both quick and beautiful. You notice that this sequence is going up in twos. Another way to write that would be, and here's the moment, it's 2n. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is it 2n? And where does this letter come from? n is the letter used uh, by mathematicians to express different sequences and different patterns. Often the exam question might be phrased in a way like, write an expression in terms of n for the pattern of this sequence, for this sequence. And yes, it is the letter that we are fond of when we talk about sequences. But why 2n? It's 2n because this sequence is going up in twos. And what 2n represents is almost like the two times tables. Because when n is 1, we'd have 2 times 1, which is 2. When n is 2, we'd have 2 times 2, which is 4. 6, 8, 10, etc. OK, you may be looking at that and going, well, it's similar. OK, definitely it's similar. Um, it's going up in 2s, and our sequence was going up in 2s. But the numbers are completely different. The numbers are 2 and 4 and 6 when we had 5 and 7 and 9. What do we have to do? to that 2 times tables, that 2n, to turn it into the sequence we had of 5, 7, 9, 11. If you notice, we always have to do the same thing to get from the numbers on the bottom to the numbers on the top. What do we have to do? We have to add 3. 2 plus 3 is 5, 4 plus 3 is 7. So an expression in terms of n for this sequence would be 2n plus 3. We can quickly check that works. It should be, if we put n as 1, that will give us the first term in the sequence. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. The second term should be 7. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. So yes, we have found it. There's a method that many students prefer to this times table method, and that is the zero term. I think you'll like this. Many students do. They, they get the 2n bit. OK, it's going up in 2, so it's going to be 2n. But this plus 3, well, why wouldn't it be minus 3 to get from 7 to 4? And things get a little bit confusing. Here's another way to find out whether it's going to be plus 3 or minus something or, or whatever you find the zero term. In other words, you go backwards one in the sequence. 
that always works. You go backwards one in the sequence, and in this sequence we have nine, seven, five. So for an arithmetic sequence, what would the next one backwards be? The next one's backwards would be positive three. And indeed, that is what we get for our extra bit. OK, I can tell you're desperate to practice for more. So let's do that. Let's do a sequence such as um, minus 2, 1, 4, 7, and 10. Again, the question is to create a lovely expression in terms of n for this sequence. I know you probably could. Let's not fill that in. Oops, a daisy. Didn't want it filled in. Never mind. Let's just delete that. I know um, you wanted um, uh, a sequence where you could just go up. So the next term would be 13 and 16. And But if we were asked for the 100th term or the 50th term or the 1000th term, it would get very long writing that sequence out. So that's why we look for expressions. What's this expression going up in? Remember, that's the first question we should ask. What's it going up in? It's going up in threes. So we write 3n. If it's going up in twos, we write 2n. It's going up in threes, so we write 3n. How would we get the extra bit? Because it's not just 3n. 3n would be 3, 6, 9, 12, which is not what we've got here. Let's use that fancy method and go back one in the sequence. 4, 1, minus 2, going back one in the sequence, would be minus 5, because it's going down in threes if we go backwards. So our answer for this sequence would be 3n minus 5. But wait, I have another question for you. Well done for that. But what would the hundredth term of this sequence be? And please don't tell me that you're tempted to go up th th three each time. So 13, 16, 19, that would take forever. What is the hundredth term? We simply replace the n with 100 to get the hundredth term. So 3 times 100 is 300. Take away 5 is 295. So the hundredth term in the sequence, bang, bang, bosh, instantly, 295. What would the thousandth term in this sequence be? The thousandth term. Well, we put, we replace, we always replace the n with the term we're looking for. So we're looking for the thousandth term. So it's going to be 3 times 1,000, which is 3,000. Take away 5, which is 2,995. That would be the thousandth term. And you can use that trick for the 50th term, 20th term, any different term you want. How about one last sequence, and I'm going to ask a slightly weirder question right at the end. OK, the sequence this time is going to be, just make it off the top of my head, the sequence this time would be 4 and, let's say, minus 1, minus 6, minus 11, minus 16. Right. What's it going up in? Well, actually, it's going down. It's going down by, it's going down by five. And if things, if it's minus five each time, well, you're right. It would be minus five n. You always do what it's going up or down in, and then an n. So it's minus five n. How do we get the extra bit? Because it's not just minus five n. That would be minus five, minus ten, minus fifteen. This is different. How do we get the extra bit? We find a zero term. Let's write that in bold because it's such a cool method. You get the zero term. And the zero term, you go backwards one. So going backwards one, you'd have to add five to go backwards one. And that's nine. So the zero term is nine. So it is 5n plus nine.